you so much for the introduction and uh, the privilege of being here. And it is super wonderful to be here with, with Chris uh, in this co-creative time. And our, and our aim is to have some storytelling, to have a place to learn and to grow and to be nourished and to practice together. And we have a, um, we have a practice at Global Roundtable Leadership, which is with every interaction, that we leave the better for having been together. And Chris and I talked about this, and this is certainly our aim today. So we welcome you all. And uh, before Chris and I say anything else about ourselves and, and get more deeply into the this, this story and, and uh, this time together, we wanna start as a whole group. We wanna start literally with sharing presence, sharing power, sharing leadership together. and. Uh, we want to emphasize how much each one of us matters in making any experience uh, vibrant and meaningful. And, and so I want to start us especially, um, you know, we were asked by NHBSR to now share through the lens of the virus. And certainly uh, with the virus and all of the different aspects of unrest in our country and around the world and disruption and potential it feels very fitting to start with grounding ourselves and coming present here and, and taking some breaths. And so I want to invite us to take eight breaths together, just feeling your feet on the floor, getting comfortable in your own chair or if you're standing. And with your first two breaths and whatever pace you take them, but I encourage slow, deep, juicy breaths, <laughs> that, that the first two breaths you consider why, are you, why do you care to be here? Just take your first two breaths and think about why do you care to be here? And then your second two breaths, just breathe and smile and notice any change, just breathe and smile. And then with your next two breaths, just breathe and think of somebody or something that you're grateful for. Then with your final two breaths of this intention, of course, we'll keep breathing. Just breathe and think about the other currently 77 people that are here today, that all of us have felt a call to be here in this space. So just zoom out your attention and your gratitude with your next two breaths, just to connect beyond your rational mind, the sense of feeling to the other 77 people that are here with us today. Thank you, everyone. And remember, uh, we don't go away from each other. This whole hour, our presence impacts our, our, this field, this social field of learning that we're in. And along with uh, the wonderful introduction we received, I just want to name my father, whose business I worked in for 10 years. And uh, what I want to name about him, Kenneth, Kenneth John Hanau, and the influence he's had on my life is that he had this incredible gift of bringing out the best in everyone uh, that he met, truly. And that he would always say that, uh, that leadership and the work is uh, first and foremost about the quality of relationships. And so we are, we want to shift the paradigm from thinking of leading as positional, which we'll get into a little bit more, and that he was truly curious and open and believed the genius was throughout your organization beyond anyone's roles. And I want to say that in meeting and working with Chris, that uh, Chris too, in my estimation, so cares to shift the paradigm and the consciousness 
from cultures of experts, which we've been so conformed, not that we don't value our expertise, but, but to become transformational learning organizations and, and, and learning cultures. And uh, I also just want to name that I'm a single mom of two beautiful sons and a daughter-in-law, and that I live in Keene, New Hampshire, and part-time in Brooklyn, New York, and that I'm so privileged to be here and so happy to be here to grow and learn and connect with you all today. And Chris, I want to turn it over to you to, for your introduction too and Great. what you want to say. Thank you, Maureen. It's uh, so good to be with everybody. Uh, thank you for allowing me the privilege to be here. Uh, I too am from Keene and a lifelong resident and uh, have two uh, beautiful daughters and two amazing grandsons with uh, a granddaughter on the way. So very exciting times for us. And um, I, we come as a second generation company. So my father founded the company as an insurance agency in Keene uh, in the early uh, 60s. And uh, I entered the real estate industry in the early 80s. And the company has grown over the years. We're the largest uh, homeownership services company in Northern New England. Our primary markets are Maine, New Hampshire. Vermont and uh, parts of Northern Massachusetts. And so in addition to home searches and uh, commercial searches, we do financing, uh, settlement, insurance, uh, all the things that kind of orbit uh, successful uh, housing experience. Um, but we come with a really uh, strong tradition of uh, leadership, and uh, resonance with our people. Our, a lot of our people have been with us for, for many, many years, and we have relationships within the organization that are uh, 30 and 40 years old. And uh, so for us, we, we really look at our responsibility uh, to continue to uh, adapt to the environment we find ourselves in and do it in ways that are rewarding and that can serve people's growth. And I, that's kind of how Lori and I have known each other for many years and how we started working together, uh, and which has been a great privilege for me. And about uh, first starting with uh, some of my personal growth and then uh, bringing into uh, our organization uh, and, and how we looked at part of the shared, our shared leadership journey was first uh, talking about you know, how do we strengthen our organization through personal, individual personal growth? And I think we'll be talking about that uh, process uh, early on, uh, later on. Um, but the, uh, this COVID situation uh, has really provided uh, kind of a petri dish of leadership. And I know we've all experienced it. And for us, we were particularly challenged because we, we operate in four states. And so we had four separate administrative orders and uh, then some of the uh, from the from the state governments and of course all of this is new to everybody so it was very much a work in progress and then uh, some of our municipalities that we practice in had some of their own uh, more restrictive uh, 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 rules and so it was kind of a rolling uh, process and how we learned to deal with it and um, uh, we really, as an organization, have learned a lot, and I know as individuals, I know for me personally, it's, it's been an amazing growth experience, and uh, so we're kind of happy to, we'll be happy to share all of that with everybody as we go through this uh, next hour. Beautiful. And so what Chris and I want to do first is we want to put up... Um, Global Roundtable Leadership. I'm going to start saying GRTL because I did not give ourselves a, a short name. Uh, GRTL's definition and four pillars of sharing leadership. And so, Travis, while we got you, so, so Travis, uh, a, a GRTL team member, um, his internet's going in and out, so we may lose him. <laughs> but uh, we have a plan B if we do. But for right now, Travis, if you don't mind putting up uh, the, our, our slides, and of course, we know that we're here. This is our title, and then we'll move on from our title. So I do want to name uh, John Muir's quote here. When we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. And again, this feels so fitting that how um, our interconnectedness, I would hear sometimes that interconnectedness and interrelatedness was a more esoteric word, 
for people. And I think it's coming way out of esoteric and into very practical experience of what it, what, what, how interconnected we all are as global citizens uh, through the cr cr uh, coronavirus. And, uh, and then also how we are all getting such an education in systems change and, and, and systems connectedness. Uh, hospitals uh, to food dynamics, you know, to how we're all working together in our communities. And uh, so again, never has sharing power, sharing leadership and sharing presence felt more relevant, uh, I will say. And then uh, we'll just move to the definition. And so it's a lot to think about here. We sometimes spend um, a day on, on each definition and each pillar. So I, I, will, I will read this one. And then I'm going to see if other people want to read the pillars, if anyone feels so called to each read a pillar. But uh, our definition, there are a number of definitions out there. But the definition that, that uh, we came up with is the practice of bringing out the greatest capacity in everyone by empowering us all to be responsible for and engaged in the vibrancy and high function of the whole. And I wanna say that along with this being a fundamental shift in how we understand and apply power and leadership and invite power and leadership, that this is also uh, a part of the shift into becoming a transformational learning culture. We have four key foundational pillars And so would someone be willing to read the pillar of humanity? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, I can't <couldn't> mute. <laughs> Come on in, is that Sue? Oh. Sure, um, I'll go ahead. Uh, humanity, we recognize each other and meet as equals in our humanity what exists at the core of us before relating through roles, status, and expertise. Thank you so much, Sue. And I may not be able to see everyone who uh, reads. I happen to have Sue near me on my screen here in gallery view. And, uh, but I just want to name that when, I, when we created this pillar, I did not realize how radical this would be. And that again, I want to uh, acknowledge the deep conditioning we've been through the industrial age of how mechanistic we have, have become in the workplace and how radical it is to consider and practice getting to know each other and seeing the humanity in each other with compassion and care uh, and curiosity before we relate. How often do we say, what do you do right away, right? Instead of who are you, tell me something about yourself. And so the second pillar, would someone be willing to read this pillar? And Michelle, you, you had been willing. Would you read this one? I would love to. Thank you. Um, equality. We relate as equal learning partners in full acknowledgement of what we can contribute and learn from each other. And so even before equity, we want to stand for equality. Uh, and certainly equity also, uh, but equality, that we are each born with original gifts and talents and that we are equal first and foremost as humans and in the possibility for what we can learn and how we can gain from each other. The third pillar. I'll, I'll read that. Thank you. Wholeness. We are fully ourselves wherever we are. We are also conscious of the concentric relationship and impact of self to group, group to mission, and mission to the world, and the world to all of life. Thank you so much, Deborah. And, and so this, again, uh, the, the practice of not hiding, uh, this shame, you know, intimidation, there's so much that can come in that can reduce us uh, and keep us from who we fully are and accessing our full genius and gifts, and so we encourage this wholeness in the workplace, and, uh, or everywhere we go. <laughs> and, and that also this, this next part is, is a, a little bit of systems language, systems understanding, and that even a decade ago, it was overwhelming to think in terms of system, but the systems change, but the and systems thinking, but there's something that's happened in the leap of our consciousness as, as social, uh, beings and we're having more of a grasp of thinking just outside of ourselves and realizing the impact we have on each other 
and the impact uh, we have within our organizations and our organizations can have on the world with our missions. And so uh, we can take down well, the, the uh, slide, the, this part of the slideshow for right now. And I'd love to give you, Chris, um, uh, I did not realize we were gonna, um, I'm sorry, it was my miss totally that I didn't realize that we, we ourselves wouldn't be starting right at one. I should have known better, of course. NHBHR needed to do some introduction uh, and acknowledgement. And so, uh, Chris, maybe about eight minutes or so um, for, for this next part on your storytelling of, of using each one of the pillars to share something about how that's impacted uh, your journey during, during the virus. Yeah, that's great, of course. Yeah, thank you, Lori. <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> it's official now, right? We're officially being recorded. So, I, you know, first, I, I, one of the things when Lori and I were talking about uh, putting our, uh, our session together, you know, one, one thing that we came across was that our shared leadership process that we've, that we've been through over the last, you know, year and a half, uh, you know, just the way the universe works, uh, we were very prepared because of the shared leadership practices that we've been working through as a leadership team. We weren't perfect, but we were prepared. And I think, you know, we all, we've talked about this, my, my, my senior folks, and, and we've really talked about really how fortunate we've been uh, to have this type of uh, training, if you would, and um, perspective to allow us to move through an event. And of course, none of us have pandemic training. So, it was new to everybody, but I think for, uh, as you start to go through the pillars, you know, we start with humanity. One of the first things, obviously, is that most of us have had to make some pretty difficult business, business decisions as it relates to some of our teammates. And uh, we were able to get through that, whether it was a layoff or furlough or, or readjustment of positions. We were uh, able to get through that um, with, uh, uh, you know, maintaining our core values, uh, taking into account people's family situation, of course, health and uh, welfare being the priority and uh, people's safety. And so we, we were able to navigate that in a way that uh, created some opportunities for people and really re re rewired our system. And so uh, we are looking forward to bringing some of our teammates back over time. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, that was the very first thing that you rolled in, that we rolled into, because really nobody knew what and we still don't really what the total impact is. And so to Lori's point about systems, it really challenged our systems thinking. Um, and, and just sidebar to that, we had uh, at the time, our largest seasonal uh, pipeline, which be, which be largest seasonal uh, number of homes uh, under agreement ready to close. We had 850 homes in four states that people were preparing to, to, for their closings to move into. And so, it created an enormous challenge, especially with the uh, with the uh, uh, the orders that were coming down from the states and municipalities. Uh, on the equality side, so we immediately moved to two meetings a day. We started at ten. We had one meeting at ten and one meeting at four. And I don't know about everybody else, but how I've come to understand the last 14, 15 weeks now is that every day is a week, every week is a month. That's kind of how it feels. Like things have been moving that fast. And we would have these 10 o'clock meetings and four o'clock meetings. And, and other than the fact that you were in the same clothes, like you'd hardly know it was the same day. It was just crazy, right? And, um, and uh, from an equality perspective, uh, we all had an equal voice, our senior team, uh, and there's six of us on how we were gonna proceed. And I'll talk a little bit about collective wisdom um, when we get to that part. But it, it really allowed us uh, to be able to uh, see each other and hear each other. And when we left the room, we were all com you know, completely on the, on the same page. Um, the wholeness piece, we all, the wholeness pillar, we all went into this um, event, and I just, that's what I refer to it as. We all went into this event, you know, none of us have any training for this. And so we all went in as ourselves and stayed at ourselves. And, and, I, and I think that being able to follow the pillars and the training that we had um, allowed everyone's unique gifts uh, to come out. And um, it was great when we, 
when we broke from either our 10 or our four o'clock meetings, everybody, everybody knew what to do. And then we would get back together and um, uh, at, at four, which felt like a new day. And uh, the cycle would start all over again. And uh, there's parts of it that, you know, certainly were challenged, but there's other parts of it that were really, uh, uh, from a growth perspective, you know, personal growth and team growth, uh, pretty exhilarating. And then I think the most important part really is collective wisdom. You know, it was like having six CEOs in the room. Um, you know, the, uh, it was not about, uh, you know, we don't operate with a lot of hierarchy anyways. Uh, and this whole process was really devoid of hierarchy. It was really about the collective wisdom as the group making our decisions, uh, some difficult, uh, some very innovative uh, about how we were gonna manage not only just the business, the day-to-day -day business, but how we were gonna care for our customers, how we we're gonna care for our teammates. Uh, so uh, like I said, the, the pillars themselves and, and the shared leadership process, we weren't perfect. Uh, but we were prepared, and I think that's that's one of the things that we're so grateful for having uh, that type of exposure and starting this process really over a year and a half ago. So. Yeah, and, and um, I want to name Chris that um, that two uh, that both you know Amanda and uh, Angela on on you, you know your team you know had the idea of doing a retrospective uh, that happened just a couple of weeks ago and which is so important within building a learning culture, transformational learning culture of, again, like, I don't know what perfect even means. I'm, I'm not even sure what perfect really means. And when we can, again, this, it, it, everything becomes a practice, right? The practice of getting out of the mindset of, of perfection where, in which the critic uh, can so live too, you know, and, and, um, and that it was just so amazing for us as a team to see your team really embrace your learning and really look back, stop long enough to take hours, to take a number of hours in a few different processes uh, to, to look back and to call the knowledge of, of where you feel, felt you were applying the framework of, of sharing leadership and compassion accountability, where you can grow next. Again, it's not about shame it's again a practice of leaving shame thinking that we've done something wrong or bad right but again where can we bring our curiosity to learn and to look at how we go forward uh with the with the learnings for the next stage of a few weeks before we check in again in an agile way on 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 calling those learnings and what is it we want to learn next and so i just want to also i know it's be you know beyond, beyond the pillars but it, it was a practice of using all the pillars really right. Uh, right. In, a, in a retrospective that uh that i was was really quite something to be a part of and well right and it was and it was counterintuitive you know we to take a break in the middle of an emergency to say hey let's stop for a second and see how we're doing let's let's kind of go back and Let's go over what we've done at that point. I think it was at 10 weeks. And let's go back and, and let's kind of evaluate uh, the decisions that we've made. What would we do differently? What we learned in the process? You know, it was the, the, the review really was a, uh, you know, it was such an amazing learning process for all of us. We just, we, you know, it gave us the opportunity to look at some things that we clearly would do differently. But, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And that's the purpose of having a learning culture. Exactly. You know, that was a fun process, but it, it took a little bit because you're in the middle of this high octane event and it's like, oh, stop, time out for a minute, right? Let's, let's take a break from the action to see how we're doing. So it was, uh, but it was a great process. And, and, you know, I have a favorite proverb, an African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And how again, it's counterintuitive to, I think, how we've been conformed in mechanistic cultures, but no, no, it no. is not counterintuitive in a learning culture. And again, everyone always working, your team has just always been working to break down your habits, right? And come up with these new habits, which takes practice, which takes practice and humor <laughs> and humility. We had some pretty good, we've had some pretty good laughs along the way. <laughs> and, and, and so, we were going to take 
uh, we were going to do a five minute Q and A, which I'm realizing now <laughs> it, it was a great idea, you know, a, a, a day ago. But but uh, I'm realizing with 76 of us, <laughs> and and uh, the time we have that that. Um, I'd love to see if, if people do have questions, please absolutely put them into the chat. And if we can't get to them now, we will um, make sure we find a way to respond to your questions if you're also willing to put your an email in or, or some way we can reach you in case we can't get to them with the time we have left. Because what feels even more important is that, that we go into breakout rooms and that you yourselves Think about one of the pillars, and Travis, I'm wondering if we can just briefly put the pillars up again. And also, uh, yeah, yeah, and then we're gonna, um, we're gonna ask a question for you, and to come out with one practice of one pillar of something that you think will serve your team in a way of sharing power and sharing leadership and working together uh, that you may not have considered before. And so we'll just put up the pillars again uh, very briefly as a reminder, and then we'll give you the guiding question. So our, our humanity, uh, how, how do we lead before the habit of leading, relating through role, status, and expertise? Not to negate the, the importance of our role, status, and expertise. This is not to negate roles, but just what does it mean to lead with our humanity and how could that um, be valuable for you working as a team or within your organization? Second pillar is the quality that we are equal learning partners, first and foremost. Third is the pillar of wholeness. Why does this matter? And fourth is collective wisdom. How do we cultivate the collective wisdom of the group? 